Hi there, welcome to the studio. I'm Benjamin Cahoon and I'm gonna show you how to make a mug in 15 minutes. Oh, don't eat clay. That's a nasty thing. I'm so glad that you could join me here. Um, I'm in my ceramic studio. I know we've all been on Pinterest and Instagram and TikTok and seen like those masterful potters who just like effortlessly pull up the walls of a throne mug, but we don't often see many hand builders on those apps. This is a lesson that I teach almost all of my beginning students so that the first time they ever touch clay, we actually walk away with a finished mug. So if they can do it, you can do it too. Hand building is a little bit different from wheel thrown ceramics in that we're not going to be using a wheel at all, which is one of these guys. We're actually going to be making the entire mug out of slabs. Some of like the benefits to working in slabs rather than working on the wheel is you can more easily um, add texture to the surface. So I'll show you some like texture tools and how we can add some like really pretty pictures to the side of our mug. But also it allows us to get through the entire process in one sitting. So if we throw a mug on the wheel, we have have to wait for that piece to dry and then we trim it and then we add the handle to it and it's like a multi-step possibly even multi-day process. The mug I'm gonna show you today you can make the entire thing in 15 minutes. I'm like not blowing steam like it's just a 15 minute project. I've actually never timed it so it might even be less. I don't know. We'll see. This is my first time ever filming a YouTube video, so I'm super excited that you're here. A lot of you guys know me from um, TikTok and from Instagram, so I'm really excited to start my following here. Anyway, like, let's just hop into it. Let's talk through the tools and supplies that we're gonna use to make our mug today. First off, I have a needle tool that's sold in most clay stores. Um, it's just like a normal needle tool, nothing special about it. You can also use a fettling knife. You can also use a butter knife that you have in your kitchen. The clay will just wash off. Next up, I have some rib tools. Normally I use metal, but sometimes I use rubber. I have one that's smooth so that I can smooth out the surface of the clay. I also have a serrated rib so that scoring is a little bit easier. If you don't know what scoring is, that's A-OK. -okay. We're gonna cover that later in the video. I also have some texture tools. Both of these tools are homemade, this one being carved clay that's been fired to bisque. This one's just a dowel that's been cut into to create some interesting texture. If you don't have homemade tools, that's okay. I'm gonna be making a video later on to show you how to make your own homemade tools. You can also use 3D printed, rubber stamps, or even like woodblock tools that are used for other purposes. You can also go outside and get a little bit creative and get a bunch of natural materials to create texture on your surfaces. I've created a lot of different pieces using seashells or funky rocks, leaves, sticks, or even pine cones. You just gotta kind of like experiment with what's cool and what's like not so cool. Something that would be super helpful is a piece of copy paper that I just like fold it in half. This is gonna be the template for the outside of our mug form. We're gonna use this to create the cylinder of our mug. I have a little cup of water. This is not for drinking. Do not drink clay water. This is so that we can make sure our attachments are super strong. I'm gonna be using a slab roller today, but if you don't have a slab roller, you can also use a rolling pin, a dowel, or even a wine bottle turned on its side. If you're using a rolling pin, try to make sure that it's a wooden one because if you use those like marble or plastic ones, the clay likes to stick to the surface. Last, but probably most importantly, I have my clay. Today, I'm gonna to be using pugged clay, which is why it's in this tubular shape. Pugged clay means it's been recycled with a pug mill. Using recycled clay is super duper important because it cuts down on waste in the studio rather than throwing away the clay after we're done throwing or hand building with it we're actually able to reconstitute it into usable clay over and over and over again infinitely until it's been fired to bisque now that we talked through all of our tools and supplies that we're gonna need in order to make our mugs like let's actually do it let's make a mug so prepping the clay for the slab roller or to be rolled out on your table, you can't just like go from like cut blocks from the bag or like this tube from the pug mill. You kind of got to prepare it. Meaning you just got to like flatten it out a little bit. I do this just by like getting all of my aggressions out on the clay. 
like a good massage. This is probably adequate. It's flat enough that we're not gonna like overload the slab roller. You'll see what I mean. I know that everybody doesn't have a slab roller, so you're welcome to like just roll it out on the table. Just make sure it's a super even slab. We're aiming for we're aiming for our slab to be somewhere just a little bit thinner than about of a fourth of an inch thick. I uh, know that that might not mean very much, but still it's true. When I'm using a slab roller, I have to make sure that I place my piece of clay in between the two canvas sheets so that the clay doesn't get bogged down inside of our little our rolling pin here. I use these two dials on the side of the slab roller to set um, the thickness that the slab will be once it's rolled out. We start with a thicker slab and slowly go down as to not overwhelm the slab roller, but it doesn't take that long, trust me. I make sure that the clay is touching the slab roller itself, and then I start rolling it out like the old timey sea captain I know that I am. And then we go the other way, and just like magic. Our, our thing is, it's turning into a slab. Now I'm gonna make it just a little bit thinner and then we'll get going. Why not? When you're picking up a slab, be careful and use flat hands so you don't like stretch out the slab. Hold it like a baby. When I'm rolling out my slab, I wanna make sure it's big enough. I thought someone was coming in and it startled me. When I'm rolling out my slab, I wanna make sure that it's big enough that I can fit my template on it. This one's big enough that I can fit too. But also so that I can cut out a little base for it. This one is plenty big. I can even get a handle out of the same slab. Let's say that my slab isn't big enough to have both the template and my base and a handle. That's totally fine. We're gonna do this first step. You can take the remainder of the clay and then roll out another slab so that you can get the base and the handle. I'm gonna very gently lay my template upon the surface, leaving enough room so that I could cut out a base if I wanted to. And then I'm gonna take my needle tool and I am going to um, cut around this template. You should end up with a nice rectangle. You don't need this template. You can kind of make more of like a freeform rectangle. Just know that the less wide you make your mug, the taller it will be and the skinnier it'll be too. I leave my cutout rectangle inside what I call the frame of the slab so that when I'm using my texture tools, I don't displace the clay too much. Meaning get like wobbly sides. Like I, I, I want them as, as possible. So this is a roller. So I will just add even pressure rolling this across the surface like so and like, mm, that's some nice texture. Then I have just like a stampy stamp. I'm just gonna stampy that stamp. Repetition is gonna be your friend, my friend. So if you repeat forms over and over again, it's gonna feel natural and pretty. Oh, that's a principle of design. My art degree is showing. Do you want to see my texture? I don't wanna move my camera, so I will now remove it from my frame and I will show it to you. Ooh, ah. For now, I'm gonna set aside the remainder of my slab. Next up is that word that I used earlier, the scoring. You can use a serrated rib, but like I said, you can also use a needle tool. It doesn't really matter. I like to describe making attachments like creating Velcro. I wanna create two rough surfaces so that it's easier to join the two. Scoring is creating that rough surface. So I can use my serrated rib like this to create a bunch of little score lines like so, but I can also use my needle tool to kind of just like rough up that surface too. Just like Velcro, I want both sides that are going to be attached together to have that rough surface. So I know that I'm gonna make my cylinder like this, so that means the inside here is gonna get that other score line. You can also do this by flipping over the slab like the page of a book. So now I'm gonna use the needle tool to show you how I do it. I just kind of scratch it, scratch it back and forth like this. I'm only scoring about a fourth of an inch into the slab, like so. Ooh. Here's where the water comes in. I'm gonna solidify that attachment by adding just a tiny bit of water to the surface. Then I pick up the slab very carefully and I am going to just squeeze Squish those two scored pieces together. Like I said, like Velcro. Now you can leave this seam on the outside as is and use it kind of like a design element. It kind of like tells a story of the way that the piece was made. It tells people the way it was like hand built. I think that I'm gonna keep it on the outside. However, this seam on the inside, I do want to get rid of. And I do that by using my thumb or like the back of one of my knives or even like a wooden scoop knife tool. I'll show you one of those but I'm just gonna use my thumb. So I just kind of like rub the clay and smooth it out using my thumb. You can use a little bit of water if that makes it easier for you, but generally I don't like to do that. 
I normally flip the mug upside down a few times just so that I can reach um, all the way down into it. This does not have to be perfect. There is no expectation for this to be perfect today. But you'll end up with something like this on the inside. So there's most of the seam is smoothed out, but then the outside is, she's bold and she's beautiful. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get that slab that I set aside earlier. This is kind of like a cooking show. And I'm gonna place the um, mug on top of the slab, like as much, as closest to a circle or whatever shape that I want to have the base as possible. You can like do a little like triangle or something. I don't know, it might be funky. And then I'm gonna cut out around the piece. I normally cut out just outside of the piece, kind of like a bubble cut, but you can also disguise the bottom seam by just cutting directly um, next to the mug. Then I'm gonna set this aside again and we're almost there. Look at that. I flip my piece upside down and take off this slab and I kind of like use the water to smooth out the edges. Make sure you don't use too much water and stick your slab to the table like I did moments after I said not to. And then next up is attaching the bottom. You can just take this slab and just like attach it directly to the bottom like this. However, I'm gonna show you how to make it just a little bit more fancy. If you have a right angle that's been attached with slabs, you can get little boogers on the bottom that catch like sponges as we're cleaning, but also cream and sugar or chocolate milk, or I don't, I don't know what you drink, can get stuck down in that seam and it could be hard to clean. We're gonna create a rounded bottom on the inside of our mug to prevent that. I learned this technique while I was an apprentice potter with um, an artist named Alyssa Clark. If you're watching this, howdy, hey, Alyssa, I appreciate you. But what I do is I just take water and I wet the top of the mug and then I pinch the top like this to create a ribbony um, edge on the top. I know it looks a little bit funky and you're like, Benjamin, what are you doing? But trust me, it's gonna be great. So I just do that all around until I have like a ribbony surface. Like so. And then I'm going to fold in that top ever so slightly, like so. Now that's gonna be the bottom where I score and attach to the mug. It'll look like this. I go back and I take my serrated rib or my needle tool and I score the top of those, um, that rounded edge like this. And then I also take my slab and I score um, where the attachment is gonna be, again, like Velcro. Add just a wee bit of water, wipe the stuffs off your hands, and then slowly uh, make sure that it's all lined up. I only kind of want to cry because I didn't realize it stopped recording and I like, I uh, made the whole mug. So I remade it and we're back to the step that we were on and let's keep going. So as you can see in the bottom, we have that little ribbony edge that we created by folding in um, the sides of the base. We're gonna use this wooden tool that I forgot to mention earlier, but you don't really need it. You can use your finger if you want to. We'll just say that this, this was the mystery tool that we could use later. But it has a rounded scoopy bottom on it and I am going to go on the inside of this and smooth it out using that scoopy um, rounded bottom. I'm just gonna do that really quick. You can dip it in water if it's easier. Ta-da! Look at that rounded bottom. There's no cream, sugar, or chalky milk gonna get stuck down in there. Now we have this seam on the bottom that you can smooth up into the side of the mug to kind of like disguise it, but I actually like to accentuate the fact that there's a bottom. Again, it kind of tells the story. And I do that by pushing up the um, slab in like little like ocean waves like this. And it just creates something like interesting for you to look at and for you to hold when you're drinking your whatever. Now that we have our base attached, I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna pull over um, that slab that we used and we're gonna cut a small um, skinny rectangle to use as a handle. Something around five, six inches is gonna be just dandy. Like we did earlier with the base, I'm gonna use water to kind of like smooth out the slab on the sides so that it's a little bit easier to use. There's a lot of different ways to make handles, but slabs are gonna be the quickest for what we're doing today. And there's also the benefit that you can add texture to your slab handles. So I'm gonna take the same roller that I used on the mug and I'm gonna create some cool um, repetitive wood pattern on the outside of my handle. I know that I'm going to attach my handle um, like this. So the scoring will happen on the points of contact on the side of the mug here at the top and here at the bottom. I have my mug and I know that the handle is gonna go over here. So I'm gonna kind of like see about where I want my handle to attach, about an inch down from the top and then pretty much right at the base. I'm gonna score here and here, and then I'm gonna create that Velcro surface on the other side as well. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to reinforce that attachment. And then I'm going to, again, very technical term here, 
wiggle squish it into place on both of these score marks. Take extra care as you're attaching handles because it's gonna be the most used part of the mug. It's just important that that connection is really strong so your handle doesn't just like fall off as you're drinking whatever you're drinking. You can smooth um, these seams all the way in so they disappear, or you can take um, like our wooden knife that we used earlier and kind of smooth out these edges as well. You could be done here, but let's take it just a little bit further. Similar to what we did to the base, I'm also gonna make a more comfortable drinking surface on the lip of this mug, because right now we have like a really boxy squared off lip. I kind of want it to be at a slight point and angle just to make it more comfortable to drink. I add a little bit of water, and then I use my thumb and index finger to kind of smooth out um, the top into a like a rounded point. It'll look something like this. Now I'm going to take my thumb and I'm just gonna push out, like flare out the top of the lip so that it's a little bit more comfortable to drink as well. I mean, like this could use some final zhuzhing. However, it's done. Like you have a functional mug. I hope that was 15 minutes, but regardless, it, it like it wasn't that much time. Imagine all the time that you saved waiting for your wheel thrown piece to dry and the trimming and then the other attaching. We just made this mug in such a short amount of time and just like all at once. We didn't have to do any waiting. I want, I want some. <laughs> A nice little uh, oat milk latte. Oh, I got clay on my lip. Oh, don't eat clay. That's a nasty thing. Thank you so much for joining me for my very first YouTube channel. I'm so excited to be here. A little bit nervous about the, what the editing is going to look like with such a long video, but you know, we're, we're going to get there. We're going to get there just fine. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe on this video so you're sure not to miss the content that I put out. We're going to do all sorts of clay tutorials, learning all of the different things, but then also just like discussing some important um, topics in art. It really does help even if you just like this video to bring it to a wider audience, so that would be amazingly appreciated. Thank you all so much for your support, and I'll see you soon.